Good morning. So uh, today we are going to uh, discuss a case which was a few days back. Presenter is Dr. Abhinav Agarwal. We have the whole team here. All fellows are here. So, go ahead, Abhinav. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is a 10 year female. She presented the complaints of on and off chest pain it was, uh, for last one year. My to break <coughs> was a um, different type, not specific any location, and was not limited to daily activity. The chest was non exertional and was not radiating to any specific site and was uh, not related to feeds. Hold on, you want to qualify this further anyway? So this chest pain seems to like a non-specific chest pain. It is because there is no uh, no association with exertion or uh, with dyspnea. So it uh, it might be a cardiac. For example, any other old girl comes to you with chest pain. What are the things? Uh, in chest pain, we need, we need to. You don't love expect them to have anginal chest pain at ten years. Let's say rare yes. cases. So what are the which you will think of. First uh, happens, what happens in, our, in your outpatient is you send for equation to the x ray, yes. they all come normal. So you are back to square one. Yes. So the most test pain that we find in this age is musculoskeletal chest pain. So uh, to, to rule out that generally it is, uh, it is, a, it is, it is mainly a uh, pin picking type of specific chest pain localized to a particular area or since it is associated with deep inspiration or deep expiration. Thing that is because of uh, cardiac condition, generally it is uh, localized in the uh, throbbing type or uh, not pricking type. The common associated cause for a lot of anxiety among children, especially slightly older adolescents who are worried about their body image, who are being reprimanded in the school. Around times when they are under stress, they tend to get chest pain or abdominal pain. So, it is a realization disorder due to stress. There is nothing that you have to rule out. To rule out pulmonary causes. And as you also should rule out cost of conductive and vitamin D deficiency causing chest pain. So, pulmonary causes, which are the ones which you should not miss? Uh, this kind of non specific chest pain is also noted in Evans anomaly, metal wall prolapse, mixometers, metal walls. They also have this kind of Explain uh, deep seated pricking kind of pain. Explain uh, by ischemic episode, but you do have this kind of pain, vague kind of chest pain, so you should not miss them. Other rarer conditions you should not miss is uh, anomalous region of the coronary arteries, which go in between the vessels, which get compressed in the eye outflow. Yes, there's another one, but it's extremely difficult to detect. It's more often incidentally detected than. Just then. But the aspects you must not forget, like LV outbox, fraction, box session, these things you should never suspect. I mean, you should not miss out. So, I uh, think with the features of chest pain, we, uh, we were more inclined towards the non specific chest pain. Uh, uh, and there was no history of syncope, headache, cramps, palpitation, evil fatigability, uh, claudication, sinus, and uh, the pain uh, history and there was no history of any medical or physical intervention in the past. And medical history was uneventful and developmental history was also uh, normal, appropriate for the age. She was a student of class 4 and was average in study. So uh, we went to the examination and we found that the pulse rate is around 76 per minute with the normal rate rhythm volume in both upper limbs. But directed pulsations were prominent. And uh, when we the bilateral femoral and distal pulses of uh, dorsal spadium and posterior tibial, they were absent. And they were little delay. So, uh, in the rate, it was 32 per minute, abdominal pulse, and there was no respiratory distress. The patient was very surprised. When the BP, the BP was in the right upper limb and lower limb was higher, and it was lower in the uh, right lower limb and left lower limb. And there was a second difference of uh, 40 IG in the upper limb and uh, lower limb. And uh, the, 
the normal BP that is according to its age at 50th centile is 100 by uh, 100 by 50 mmHg. But the BP of this patient lies into 152 by 75, which is which was more than 99 centile. And this is 96 percent in all the four limbs. So oh, we're, we're moving further. This is diagnostic of a particular condition. Yes. Okay. So just with this, you can make a diagnosis. Sir, uh, it is into a question of iota. Yeah. So we're not tired or tired. Uh, can be arthritis also very often iota arthritis also involves the upper surface upper. which is more often called classically it is called as a reverse coaptation rather than coaptation girls are well fed uncles are not well fed so the limb pressure is lower lower limb pressure is higher so very easily it's a reverse coaptation but we see, see lot of patients where Classic or abdominal aorta is involved, so they have a cork like so the middle aortic syndrome, classical middle aortic syndrome, where mid thoracic of thoracic aorta is involved, they can have cork like sensation. But this is diagnostic of cork sensation. So I must always stress, I always stress to everybody that please do feel lower limb pulses, do feel femoral pulses, because miss cork in large number of patients, whether it is an adult patient or a pediatric patient never never forget to feel feet. Let the teacher long ago is no more but that's enough to say failure. But I have a is to say simply because you should never miss a coaptation. It's a truth actually. We miss a lot of coaptation simply because we don't feel the process. Is it okay to feel the process and say there is no coaptation? No because of collector also. Yes, dorsal speedis can be felt. But femoral may be absent. Because there's a quark or not, you think that pulses are a little feeble. So, how will you measure in the, by the bedside apart from checking blood pressure? Is there another way to avoid this radio femoral delay? So the lower lower fusion falls further, so the radio femoral delay gets accentuated. Important radio femoral delay are radio femoral delay. It is more specific. More sensitive will be radio delay. It's easier to detect as well. One thing you will look for in this examination, in the general physical examination, once you have found a radio femoral delay. Okay, you have already recorded it. Right? Yes. You look at especially in adolescents, muscular development of the upper limb and lower limbs. Older children, upper limbs are much better than uh, developed than the lower limbs, muscle development. What else? Or, We see which functions are present, like right upper limb, left upper limb. That is already done. That is already done. Anybody? Else? Is there that with people else? Uh, they need to on the audio, but that will pull out of the stuff. Look for collateral surrounding the scapula. Yes, How will you look for those collateral? Sir, in the truth, we uh, see tiny uh, from the side of the from one of the uh, we drone the uh, patient from one that we look. Make the patient lean forward. So, scapula and put the hands forward so that the scapula is coming apart. So, then will you do? So, just put your both palms. On them, especially on the medial, medial of the scapula, you can feel the pulsation. Yes. Around the scapula is a classical feature of uh, coaptation, especially for children and adults. Hello?
net we get a triple effect. Yeah, triple is just even in aortic stenosis, other aortic stenosis or clot patient, you can get a double effect. It's because of HOCM. Why? Why it has any other flow center? Why the rate triple effect? Yes, because of the dynamic. Because the effect in a little late, we get another chain of the effect over a triple effect. Okay. Another thing you must look for while palpating is panel palpations because of prominent chains of the size. Internal arteries normally they are not palpable. Sometimes, just as you get in. Summary at IVST is in map card, you might get dominant pulsations here as well. Okay. The function S1 was normal, S2 was single, there was no uh, S3 or S4, there was no ejection click. There was much. one was uh, early uh, early systolic murmur at right upper sternal border was great uh, 3 by 6, was soft and uh, and no radiation. And this murmur was on uh, in left paraspinal region at T4 and T5 level on the back with the 2 by 6 uh, intensity and uh, radiation. So, each one of these murmurs in a very important negative component that is no ejection click. So, what does it mean? Because it is uh, no click signifies that there is no bicuspid aortic wall, which is very commonly associated with professional biota. This condition can be no ejection click, main ejection click, and no bicuspid aortic wall. So, the aorta is dilated yes. because it still have a vascular ejection click. So, in a given patient, it may be difficult to differentiate. Okay. But absence of ejection click is a good thing that the ascending aorta is not dilated. That's very nice of this child in the long term. In the other case, priority wall is not there. These two are very important features because the bicuspid wall is a commonly associated cardiac condition in this wall. Okay. So this is another commonly asked examination question as to what percentage of what patients have bicuspid wall. It's always of practical importance in your day-to-day -day practice because bicuspid wall is the commonest condition in heart disease and so you have to look both ways. You have to look, if you get a quotation, must be diuretic wall. If you get a bicuspid diuretic wall, you must look at the process. So, you should never forget our brothers. They are twins, actually. So, if they are, then if it is not, we should be happy. But if, if you should not be surprised if it is there. So, it's very, very important whether when you see a bicuspid diuretic wall, whether it is an adult or a pediatric population patient, you always look for its twin. That is for At this point, we should also so, uh, things about associations of what, but maybe we will discuss that a little later. Yes. This is physical examination. The S4 is not there. What does it mean? So, the dashboard dysfunction is not there. It means it is, we have been able to hear it or dashboard dysfunction is not Because this coarctation ha has been there, the lower limb pulsations are not there, means it's a severe coarctation. So, it has been there for 8 10 years now. Yes. So, it should have developed by now. Okay, it's already hypertension by the criteria. Okay. S3 not there is it good or bad. It is the situation because if S3 is there in enough, it means systolic acid elevation function. That means it is core problem. That means prevention has to be aggressive and should be able, should be addressed to relieve the obstruction as much as possible. Let's discuss about the murmur. This is a systolic murmur at right upper sternal border, uh, grade 3 by 6. Okay. What are the <coughs> usual causes of this murmur? So, in patient, it can be because of bicuspid aortic valve. Okay. Or uh, if the ascending aorta is elevated, we can find a murmur. Okay. Or, uh, or the core murmur itself, the systolic degree of the coarctation itself can be heard. But what is where the systolic degree of coarctation can be heard? On the back. The capillary area on the left side that is the best clear as it is, it has got the highest intensity. Okay, so you found in this number which was a low intensity on the back. Okay. What
what could be the cause of this nerve it can be collateral okay it could be collateral but it could be due to coarctation itself which is a very critical coarctation then we are continuing okay so i have the question and in this level question again cause of continuous murmur as per the cardiologist we must be able to write law at least 10 causes so what the five causes just to make sure that you are passing question Never fumble when you are saying continuous murmur. One one question is: Do we get continuous murmur? I don't think so. We don't get continuous murmur. That's why I understand. We don't get continuous. Murmur. But you have to tell the head that it is not loud or soft. Yes. You know, maybe you should differentiate a continuous murmur from a two and four murmur. But I don't think there is any grading for continuous murmur. Grading is there for systolic murmur as well as for diastolic murmur. Many people even feel that diastolic murmurs need not be graded. Just have to tell because uh, whatever condition is causing diastolic murmur, severe is assessed by the length of the murmur. So there is no controversy whether you want to grade diastolic murmur. But as I understand, I don't think there is any grading for continuous murmur. Even they can enlighten us. So sir, should I uh, just uh, how to tell that it is loud or soft? Really, they are not there. Examination. There was no significant pain in chest, abdominal, or spinal examination. Physical examination. No other thing which we forgot. You should have mentioned there are no features of abdominal as somebody thought of. Facial discomfort. Yeah, that you already told. But especially because you already made a quad diagnosis, I think it is worthwhile. Discussing a little while ago about general physical examination, so we we made a diagnosis of coarctation based on the based on pulse examination. So once we have done that, we should always look for just for that. So not inappropriate if you say that on some signs of turnus or I I didn't find signs of turnus on general physical exam. Okay, now we have the after this. Let's go forward. The chest X-ray, chest X-ray, PA view, showing the status colitis, levocardia, there is cardiomegaly, LV of effect, with ARS, and normal thing. The significant finding is there is a bit notching that is present at the fourth. And uh, the QP normal, there is a uh, the PS. What I'm saying now is since the diagnosis is evident on already, always look whether this diagnosis is there and what should be associated things that are there. Yes. You always see the X ray in the light of your work diagnosis. So the X ray in the light of the work diagnosis that you have found one is uh, very classical to the big obstacle region that is rib notching. What is the rib notching is a common question. So ribs involved is another common question. What is the height of rib notching is a common question. What is the rib notching is also commonly asked. So these are the issues to remember and try to find out. Uh, the most common uh, rib notching area is the report to nine and uh, it is at the lower border of the rib. Why it is at the lower border? Because intercooler artery is uh, in that area. Intercooler groove, if you see the, if you remember the anatomy of ribs, there is a groove on the inner surface of the uh, pulmonary surface of the ribs the, near the lower margin. That is where the intercooler artery is go. Where else? What is the source of the reward? Where you arise? Intercooler artery. Uh, and descending the internal memory artery. Right, descending and they come interiorly. Interior intercostal arteries, posterior intercostal arteries. Interior intercostal arteries arise from the internal memory. Why should there be notching? 
So because, because of collateral develop, uh, development of federal circulation, the intercoastal artists get dilated. And uh, time they, uh, they, the impression over the which is seen as interest. The memory arteries are from the high pressure area. What is the arch of playback? What is these intercostal arteries which are arising posteriorly coming from the low pressure iota? That is descending from the The entry intercostal arteries are arising from the the blood always flow close from high pressure to low pressure. So ischemia which is there posteriorly will draw the blood from the end circulation. So these vessels become dilated. Whenever there is ischemia, there is dilation and arthrosty and vascular growth. So they become big arthros and they indent the interest margin. So only last question is what are the sites of collateral circulation? This
cardiologist and cardiologist got protected simply because they thought about it and got a CT scan done. Unfortunately, it was not detected. Maybe it was very small. Subsequently, it died and we are in a very sick state now. So, these complications can arise. So, please remember, easy to remember, I remember it as rule of two. So, there are two abnormalities, two shunts, two vascular abnormalities. So, another colleague asked this question is about hypertension. When does the hypertension get established? What percentage will have long standing hypertension? What are the, what are the precautions you will take to address the hypertension option where it is detected early? Okay. Anyone has any questions? Those who have logged in. Is that what you say? So, in uh, normal sinus rhythm, amplitude and duration is normal, the PR interval is normal, the RS axis is uh, prominent in lead 2, 3, and V can be 6, and uh, there is in the QT is normal and TV is normal. There is from the U wave in V2 and V3. Uh, there is left X uh, sorry, X normal and uh, there is LV force verified by this uh, wave in V1 and prominent uh, R wave in V5 and V6. Not very convinced about the LV forces. But we look for basically we look for EC just suggestive of LVH. Okay. Pressure over LVH that is that is five and six prominent R waves. Prominent R waves with STD present here in inverse. That is the usual pressure over load CCG. Again, this is more commonly asked in adult cardiologists. They refer LVH, but I think it will be asked even in pediatric cardiology exams. Best test criteria, so please do remember. But this year, I would, I mean, without the bad of prostration. I would say, okay, maybe normal if we, maybe before we try, you are getting some tall R waves. In the background of course session, I think there might be really changes is what I would say. But I'm not very convinced that ECG is remarkably abnormal. Okay? Yeah. Echo. Uh, Suppressional long axis view. So this is you showing uh, discrete coarctation, uh, two centimeter distal to the left subclavian region with diastolic spillage of blood flow. Okay. This is important thing. What are the said? Whenever you see, if you have the diagnosis here in physical exam itself. So if you are the same person who is doing the echo, and always concentrate on things that are needed for diagnosis, that are needed for different associated anomalies, and that are needed for long-term treatment plan. So cardiography, this has to be done, a directed echo here. So things you will look for in this patient is what I'm interested in knowing. Patient severe T, then left ventricle hypertrophy, any fighter diabetic valve okay. associated lesions like VHD, PDA, okay. and uh, mitral valve abnormalities. Okay. So, you, see, you got a probe in your hand as you routinely start, you put it in the subcostal region. So, what those things you will look for in the subcostal region when you are doing a subcostal window? So, the, uh, subcostal long axis will see the uh, imaging of the natural scale of the thing when you do is status. Status. When you are doing status, what you do routinely? You look for the you look for the iota both in So you put a PW there. So that's an important clue for optional aortic obstruction. What will you see in the PW? Not the first type. In question, there will be still 
mean down tracing the this velocity are lower and the this goal flow goes to the yeah. sorry very important thing the moment you go you get it if it is to the especially in in sign given x you can see the all of your data if you talk at tilt and where little to view you can see all of the descending out of your data including this sometimes especially Tau is because of the location of the aorta. You can follow up ascending aorta, transverse or descending aorta in one frame. But if you are for an infant child, infant or a new, it's possible to evaluate the aorta from below. Yeah. It is possible. Okay. So you can approximately assess the aorta. Though the arch and the large are in the far field. Identification may not be easy, but it is possible. You can see all of your time in one frame, put a color flow doppler and see whether there is any flow acceleration. Okay, so where in point in subcost. First and long axis, what will you see? Uh, uh, yes. And then we have hypertrophy. Yes. And mitral valve. Then this is condition mitral valve, LV outflow, and proximal ascending aorta. Okay. Okay, then uh, axis, what will you see? You can see with the uh, in short axis you can see whether this is bicuspid or tricuspid well mm -hmm. and uh, there is any AR is there. Like short axis you won't see AR, AR you see in the long axis. Long axis. Another important clue to presence of bicuspid aortic wall in long axis in two dimensional picture is asymmetric closure. Yes. Point closure line. Not aortic wall closure line is in the mm -hmm. lower in the center. So if you have an eccentric line. That's a key of bicuspid aortic valve. Other thing is, it, it might be associated with stenosis. If you have a doming aortic valve, that is a clue to the presence of aortic So, short is what we see. You said the mustard is inside and fish mouth sign. So, firstly bicuspid, longitudinally bicuspid. Then, what else you see? Again, you will see for hypertrophy and daily function. You look at an important association in cork, especially in infants and neonates. Look later, important implications in your treatment management, as well as long term outcomes. Okay. So, can we, what will you see? We can localize the quark. We can see the distance from the plebeian artery, severity of quark. Okay. And uh, the dilatation of uh, transverse arch or sometimes can be associated with hypoplastic arch. Yes, hypoplastic arch. All branches, whether you are able to see all three branches, is there any anomalous? Okay. Like a right arch or a left arch. Here also, especially in world system, you might be able to find the PDA value. And there are the gradient. Sometimes means Especially if it is a slightly distal quark in suprastan view in older children. So the clue will be this is nice. The abdominal aorta, pulse doppler. If it is significant, it will find the pulse aorta. Okay. You want to see any other? Okay. Distal dilatation. Very difficult to make out whether it is a long or a short segment. Another important thing which is very just treatment implication is the morphology of the quark. One is the length of the quark, other one is morphology of the quark. If it's a discrete quark which has got indentation on all sides, then it's easy to dilate. You get patients where there is indentation from the okay, it's a shelf like quark with a PDA coming off anteriorly. The PD anteriorly, then those are not those are not uh, easily amenable for balloon dilation. Quarks which are coming close to the subclavian arising right at the quark. Those are also the ones which are difficult to treat. Then there are quarks where the there is an angle like this. It goes up like this and it comes like this and there is a quark here. Those are very difficult to guide this balloon and stem. The whole thing, the transverse arch becomes long, and the quark comes into the transverse arch. Here the quark has come, only a quark comes after the iota turns around and 
and then you have to start. But here the aorta is pulled up, there is a long transverse sag and the coaptic is here right in the middle. So those are also difficult ones to stand. In the morphology, the quart is best assessed by an or an angiogram. This can give very good guides because you can plan ahead as to what you are doing. So the distance between the individual three branches also have a connotation which is the coaptic. place, obviously, there will be more space between the subclave and the quartus. But in the place, obviously, the subclave gets pushed beyond that makes our intervention that more, that much more difficult. Any questions from the people who have logged in? Uh, this is a parastermal short axis view. So in the LB has always say in short axis what is the level of the short axis? This is the papillary muscle level. At the papillary level, showing the Hypertrophic LV and good uh, contractility. Aortic short axis. Yeah. Okay. short axis at aortic valve level, showing the tricuspid aortic valve and uh, good. good for this child. Well, yeah, isolated quark is a non-isolated quark. Yeah. I said yes, newborn sir. RVH, I wanted to come to that. Quark presentation in newborn is very, very different. In newborn quark identification is a difficult task. We get because where the task is pulmonary hypertension, more commonly missed. Echocardically, the left side doesn't get affected in a quark presentation in newborn. Yes. Specifically, you see, they present as newborn severe pH. Identification of quark in a newborn is difficult. So, you get pH in a newborn. So, according pH, you must always look for quark patient. If you have a periodic valve, you are 100% sure. Bicuspid valve, nothing in the bicuspidiotic valve it is functioning. The LV is looking fine, but all dilated, severe pulmonary hypertension is there. There is a PFO which is sending left to right. PDA or may not be there, we must represent look for quark. If it is not in day one, please admit this child, keep the child in the hospital. The moment the PDA closes, the quark will manifest. Or without PDA closing, as the PDA becomes smaller and smaller, the quark will manifest. Three days, five days later, it will get quark. So we had patients where we have kept the baby in the hospital for three days, five days a week, and then operated. The fine. Gradually, quark developed and they went into heart failure. We had to operate. So, discount the possibility of quark manifesting in the first few days. As she has brought out, Dr. Priya has brought out, pH is a possibility. Are we quark in newborn friends with right heart dilatation? So, whenever there is a right heart dilatation in a newborn, you go all of you pediatric cardiologists will be called to the NIUs and newborn echo. So, if a newborn echo which shows right side dilatation, a small PFO sending left to right and PAH with a sporadic valve, please look for quark. 100% look for quark. If you are not sure, get a CT done from a good place where they can do a 3 day reconstruction and tell you whether there is a quark test. So, quark is an important uh, way, I mean, our heart dilatation is an important way in which newborn quark will manifest. Older quarks, they manifest with left heart involvement, but newborn quarks, they come with right heart dilatation. Very important thing which she has brought up. CT scan done. CT scan is the anterior posterior view showing the peak coaptation at the level of T4, T5 vertebra. Uh, we can also see collateral coming into descending aorta. This is lateral view which is showing the discrete coaptation at the same T4, T5 level. As you see, this is not a discrete coax. I mean, it's not a quark where the, there is a substantial narrowing. Mm -hmm. The posterior has indented much, much more than the interior of the other layers. Once we have which we, we will have difficulty in, uh, uh, the results are not very good. Mm -hmm. Part here is, if you see, it is a little away from the subclavian. That gives you enough 
to position a client in future. Ten year old child wait, may not be more than 20, 25 kg. Not a good candidate for stenting right now. But you eventually stent this for down follow. When you stent them, if you have a good distance of cleaving, it will be easy to position the stent. See the reconstruction image of the cross section, which which is also uh, showing uh, multiple collaterals. So full autogram, 3D reconstruction, <coughs> just showing ending rotor, arch descending rotor with a discrete small cross section, section, and then uh, we can see multiple collaterals. That is, one is the internal memory artery joining into the gastric artery and draining into uh, the uh, System. Then running into the leg system. That's, that's why you will always feel the CD sign posterior TBL. They will not be absent. Just be afraid of the CD. You should not say pop this is not there. What can we do? The CD sign posterior TBL. So always palpate femoral. Make sure you are palpating. This is a very important question in modern day in today's world. Make sure the parents are there when you are palpating the cooperation in all these children. Inappropriate touch is a very common thing that children have been taught. They can complete. Recently in one of the pet hospitals where I was looking for co when I, I asked the mother to and the child with the nurse when closing being there. The cooperation and the artery and the radial artery, the mother, mother is just a good start the back touch. They are a little taken aback. So please be sure about what you are doing. Keep the attendance around. Explain the child as well as the mother or the father or whoever is there that you are going to look for them or other signs to do it. It's a very important thing with this nearby law being around. You can be accused of indecent. Very, very careful uh, The other issue is that there are multiple collectors that are originating from the subclavian system and are running into the descending order. This is the anterior view, this is the posterior view. In this one, it is clearly, we are clearly able to see that multiple collectors are originating from the thyro cervical trunk and uh, running into the just due to cooperation and the descending order. This scan is an amazing test that, has, that helps us in large interventions. The degree to which the anatomy is shown here, the collaterals which we used to see in textbooks, is described long ago on top in dead people by people who had uh, meticulously dissected and found all these collaterals. But now, whatever those people explain, autopsy are seen on a CT scan. It's a beautiful image, you can see collaterals so nicely. So, if you read images, your exam question is done. What is the of collaterals? Where do they drain? And that also explains why the notching comes up, why you get continuous work, why you get pulsatile. So all these things can be explained easily. So, if you remember a CT scan picture, CT angiogram picture, you will remember so many things that you will remember the explanation for the notching, you will remember the trees between where it is connected because it gives you a visual memory apart from the lot of fine what is there. In Getting the continuous number also around this location where yes. multiple collectors are yes. taking yeah. So it helps us in planning our treatment because you have a long treatment coaptation where this outcome are poor. Okay. If you have a coaptation as I said of the uh, difficult anatomy is where there is a more small moderate PDA coming off, it won't dilate well, you will get it stent. If you have a anatomy where subclavian is coming off. These are issues. Other thing is we discussed about the touch. This is our diagnosis. The outcomes of balloon dilatations are not good. Risk of rupture is very high. You should always go, especially if you are dealing with older children, you should always go with a covered stand, preferably in a tunnel. Similarly, long segment box, you should always go with stands, especially covered stands, because complications are quite high, outcomes are not good. Rupture are more common in long segment quarks as well as in iota arthritis quarks as well as stagnant quarks. So if you are doing any of these, make sure to talk to the family beforehand. 
before you do that, that would probably not be very good. This complication, especially fatal complications, is higher than usual. The interventions are common and extension. Okay. Yeah, you run the video. Logged in, will they be able to see this video there? Any please? Okay, yeah. The display is give you some clues. You know, you see the transfer starts. You see this frozen image here. You see beyond the clay then smooth taping of the where uh, you have difficulty in achieving good results. Is more common, rupture is more common, aneurysm formation in the long term is more common. So, well, uh, since it is only 10 years and 20 kgs, we had to do only balloon dilatation. But uh, usually, this child should go first tank. If, if the child was say, 15, 20, 35, 40 kgs, we could have probably stented it directly. Subsequently, dilated the stents whenever the stent started of the egg, achieved by the transfer starch and and the descending water if that must be set in the stand. So these are where you should be wary of complications. So in this sense we crossed over from below and then took a balloon the average of the size. Go ahead. This is uh, a late delayed film which is showing multiple collaterals uh, sending out. So this that is showing we did the balloon dilatation of coaptation. Uh, eight, eight, eight by three tie shaped balloon and uh, ten by four tie shaped balloon. Okay, see normally cross it from below using either a thermo wire, overnet thermo wire, or a PTC wire called whisper wire, and then track a catheter on that. Take out that uh, the usual catheter that we use for crossing is. Most often a multi-purpose detector with an end hole. Really, we pass the wire. Once you cross the catheter, you replace the wire with a both a Teflon coated wire. On that wire, you pass a pigtail and do the angiogram. Once the angiogram is done and the anatomy is delineated, you do the angiogram in LAO view as well as in AP view. Once the angiogram is delineated, you take a pigtail catheter on a wire into you need for balloon dilatation. Now, it is a transfer start set was 10 or 10, it was also 9 or 10. So, we took 8 millimeter balloon. I remember well, we took 8 millimeter balloon. You should take go up to 90 percent of the descending thoracic aorta, average of descending thoracic aorta in transfer start. Transfer start is the part between between the first and third. Usually we take it between the care and the supply. Okay. So the part you measure because that is the place where it is easiest to measure. So we measure part and the descending thoracic aorta. Average that and take ninety percent of the average as the balloon size that you need. So using gas balloons, which is commonly done in our country, balloon doesn't usually suppose if you're using a ten gas balloon with full dilation, it usually goes only up to nine. It doesn't go to 10. Only New York balloons go up to 10. So you need a 9 dilatation. And if it is a number size average which you have got, then you get 8 or 10. Mm -hmm. You can cast 10 or a New York 8. You don't get good result with a New York 8. If they take a gas 10, you usually go up to 9. That's what we have. Got. Do that because the Tyshak balloons cannot take high pressure dilatation with an inflator. Dilatation doesn't produce more than two atmosphere or two bar pressure within the Tyshak. If you have a Tyshak balloon at 8 or 10 millimeter, it doesn't go through a 035 wire. It goes to a 21 or a 018 wire. So we use a stiff 018 wire from the scientific. This was a Boston scientific wire. Okay. So in the previous angiogram, it is Showing that the uh, pigtail catheter is near about completely over the descending the yeah. And after balloon dilatation, we are seeing in the, the LT projection, which is 
showing that the descending uh, this quark segment has dilated and the good flow is there in the descending rate. Can all these significant irregularity there? Sometimes we see frank dissections. We are a little worried about these dissections. Some of them, especially in long segment quark patients, are just like this. They can become aneurysms over a period of time. So on follow-up, we have to be looking for aneurysms in these patients. How much was dual gradient on the table? Sorry, I said that. And this is a view showing uh, good flow in descending aorta and the dilatation of quark segment. We can see regularity in the lower view also. Okay. So you are in an angiogram which you do after the quark dilatation. Look for dissection. Look for leaks, any leaks which are going beyond the aortic wall. And whether those beyond the quark dissection are good or not. Basically, you want to see. Dissection normally dissection will always be present. That is a mechanism of dilate, I mean mechanism of successful dilatation. There will be intimal and medial dissection, especially intimal dissection in coarctation to get a good result. Okay, whether the dissection is extending into the beyond the area causing any leak or whether the dissection is causing any obstruction in the flow into the dining aorta is an important issue that happens very rarely. Especially dealing with uh, that are long segment quarks related to the higher quadrate you can have. Go next. This is the gradient pre and post balloon. In the there was significant gradient of 60 systolic 60 millimeter of mercury pre balloon, which came down to uh, 15 post balloon. And uh, we did the blood pressure measurement pre and post balloon. The right upper limb and left upper limb blood pressure decreased from one around 160 to 130 by 80 and lower limb uh, pressure increased from 110 to around 120. Yeah, even though the balloon dilatation has been done, the upper limb hypertension I think still persists. Yeah. This child has come to our attention at 10 years of age, probably this child remaining hypertensive for the rest of the life is very high. Okay. So the child will probably need a lifelong and for the consequences of long standing hypertension. Okay, next. What this what uh, this medication will give you to this child? We have uh, beta blockers and then okay. how long do you have to this? Six months. Six months. Why six months? Why not one year? Why not two years? But the the tears that we have caused the recognized the injury that you have caused. You don't want a thrombus to power mind, embolize this tree. So you want to give aspirin for about six months. We believe that the intimal tear will heal six months. Okay. What are the long problems in this child? Better. What will you advise to the family? What are the three sides? One is aspirin. Okay. So your uh, residual quark is less, you can also use ACE inhibitors or ARB. Why help? The uh, systemic pressure, so it will decrease the chances of aneurysm formation and further increase in tear. Okay, basically anti-hypertensis. In a way, it means uh, ARB will be helpful in these cases. Or will also be helpful. Maybe they will be helpful for aortopathy because aortopathy mechanism is cystic medial necrosis. In all these cases, including marker. So, once they are definitely helpful, it is very common that the ARB, especially low sarcoma, are very helpful. Assuming Extend the same logic that it might be helpful. At the same time, make sure that the quark is not stressful quark is not significant. On quark, especially if you find that there is a re quark then please stop ARB because it can act like the renal artery renal artery. So there is renal hypoperfusion in both renal arteries, so ARBs and ACE inhibitors are contraindicated in so you only with bit color. So, the so, uh, the long standing complications we have to inform them. There can be persistent hypertension, can be there. Okay. There can be sort of aneurysm, intracranial aneurysm, and bleeding. And uh, there can be sort of endocarditis. And there can be associated lesion is there. There can be some because of that. And okay. Most important thing is you have a all the things that can happen. Yeah, yeah. The most important thing is if you then stress and balloon dilatation. Is not the end of the story, it is just the yeah. beginning. Of the fact what has been identified is the beginning of the story. The story.
memory only with the death propagation. So it's a long disease. It's a lifelong disease. It's a lifelong disease. So need long term follow up for the rest of the life. How frequently as of now you problem a month, month and six months and year in this Jordan called irritation. Depending on what you find on the evaluation, the recoction has set in, whether the pressure is controlled, whether anglism has formed, we will decide further follow up. Among us, this is probably a better cohort simply because the associated lesion of bicuspid aortic valve is not, not there. Biotopathy chances will be less if the bicuspid aortic valve is not there. This child long term is less likely to develop ascending aortic dilatation if you control the blood pressure well, less likely to develop dissection if you control the blood pressure well. But in time, we do not know whether the barrier is there or not, that you have to check if there is a symptom or any other reason a CT scan is done. Yeah, when a CT scan is done to assess the co-optation, that time ask them to take a few tests in the brain also to rule out any barrier aneurysm. These are of legal components. But the important thing which you must tell to the as well as to the child in this patient because many times unfortunate circumstances the parents forget to get the child evaluated. The child herself being intelligent children that you need follow up regularly. Then every summer you should go and see a doctor. And every child is pediatrician for what reasons you check your blood pressure. Now for what? Digital B buttons, they can measure blood pressure at home. You measure blood pressure at home, note down the readings and bring those the readings. These are all very important issues. First thing that you must stress on children is that they tend to make the medication. They are very careful about medication to make sure that they take the medication. Especially this girl will enter into teens now. They will be rebellious. They will not medication. They will scream and shout at friends. So all will come and they will end up not taking medicines, not, not going to the doctor. You have to talk to them, make sure that they follow the instructions that you have given to them. Okay. Yes, anybody has questions? Yes, we have briefly discussed what in general, physical examination, routine exam questions, how to coax in cat lab. Thing that we missed out is indications for surgery in coax. So anybody can, can who is logging, can you tell us the indication for surgery in coax? You are still laughing. To know somebody is typing. Good, very good. I am impressed. With neonatal coax, we are all pediatric cardiologists. We love our balloons. We love our wires. We love our balloon dilatations. We love our stents and device. But just because we know how to do it doesn't mean we should go and dilate everything that is available. So neonatal coax is ideally managed by the surgeon. Best time best thing to do is to the page table, do a surgical correction. Having had the, so the, the average uh, diameter of a uh, isthmus in units I think is between 6 and 7 millimeters, these rates are very high. The usual thing they do is uh, for a start segment, work is end-to-end uh, -end anastomosis, so section and end-to-end -end anastomosis with the 3D, 3D ligation. Long segment quarks nowadays are not arch hypoplasia, arch plasia with quark, yes, you repair arch as well as the quark. The important indication is associated with quark. You cannot die. You can cover stents in older children or in adults, but not in neonates. So, neon quark, if there is no LVD function, if the PDA, I think you should go for surgical correction. Neonatal coax, they come in a more even state. If it's there, then dilatation is difficult, but you can still save the situation. We have had uh, babies who have come in best situations and we have dilated. Some of them have survived and have gone on to lead good life. So, while dilating neonatal coax only in more even state, you might achieve success and you might achieve and subsequently they go for surgery. Other thing that uh, you need to operate is. If you 
have turner. Small turner, I think it is better to operate. They will be able to probably manage better, but even there the risk of leak, risk of unreasonable information is very high. Long segment coarctation, surgical results, you know, if you are dealing with adults, you can probably do a jump graph from the ascending aorta from into the descending aorta eventually. But even surgeons have difficulty in operating the long segment cords. If you if you balloon dilatation and extend them, that is probably better. The thing is, all requirements, the recommendation is to do a balloon dilatation. In older children and adults, especially those who are beyond 30 kg, 35 kg, the thing is what many people now recommend. Uh, they don't even say you do a pre dilatation. Yes. They just say you go with the stent and just implant, implant the stent directly. Whether to go for stent or a bare metal stent with cells, open cells, is a question which remains unanswered. I think the primary stenting is what is followed in older children and uh, adults. A lot of uh, adult uh, dilatations here. We have good results, except maybe two or three out of seven plus adult quarks. Majority only balloon dilatations because some of them have huge iotas, 28 millimeter, 30 millimeter, 35 millimeter iotas. Can't find such big balloons, even though in dilate some stands to their those meters, can't find such big balloons. So we ended up just doing balloon dilatations. They have done reasonably well. Some, especially in adults where the iotas are very big, they have put the covered ends which are used for dissection. So those have been used, but uh, those numbers are very small. But by the, the general trend in older children as well as adults is to do a primary 